as you probably know, most of the maps that we see aren't very accurate when it comes to showing a country's size. Obviously, there are many ways of projecting a map, and some are more accurate than others, but those aren't necessarily the most used. The most generally used map version is the Mercador projection, which has been around for a pretty long time. It was presented by a Flemish geographer, Gerardus Mercator, and it became the standard map projection for nautical navigation because it allowed to represent lines of constant course for ships, and I guess its use just stuck ever since. However, it distorts the size of objects as the latitude increases from the equator to the poles. Essentially, land near the equator is more accurately displayed in size, while places like Greenland or Antarctica are largely distorted and presented as much larger than they actually are. Now, some map projections are more accurate in this aspect, but none of them is 100% accurate, since it's impossible to display a sphere on a flat surface without distorting its proportions. A good example that people use to demonstrate this is if you peel an orange and you try to flatten its shell, I guess, it rips so you can't show the sphere as a plane. In this video, I thought we would take a look at a few countries in the world and compare their actual size to the size we usually think they have because of the perception we have of them on a map. So let's get to it. I'm using a really cool website to do this. It's called the true size of and you can check it out in the link in the description if you want to have some fun moving countries around and seeing their true size. First, Russia. Russia is the largest country in the world, and the way that we see it on the map obviously doesn't change that. It's over 17 million square kilometers, and those stay the same regardless. However, the comparison between its size and some other countries in the world is way too exaggerated on normal maps. Now, don't get me wrong, Russia is big. You could fit the US, Finland, India, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark in it and still have some room to spare, pretty much. But if you were to move Russia's display on the map to the equator, Russia loses like two-thirds of its display size. Moving it to the region of the US, we can tell that the difference between the two countries' territories isn't that big. On a regular map, you would think at first sight that you could fit maybe three or four US's in Russia, when in reality it's more likely less than two. Next, Greenland. Greenland is probably the most used example to demonstrate the distortion that maps cause. On a Mercator projection, Greenland seems as if it's almost the size of Africa, fitting three Australias inside it, when in reality it's much much smaller, with only over 2 million square kilometers when a place like Australia has 7.5 million. When we place Greenland over the equator, its size becomes real and significantly smaller. On top of Africa, it takes roughly the same size as the Democratic Republic of Congo. Interestingly, if we were to place it over the South Pole, not only would its size be distorted as well, making it larger, but its shape would also change. Moving to Romania, for instance, home of the Carpathian Mountains, Dracula, salt mines, and a lot more stuff. A reasonable size country in Europe, at close to 240,000 square kilometers. Let's take a look at how giant it would seem if it was displayed further north. Much bigger, we would think it's the size of Iran or something. And if it happened to be an island between Somalia and India along the equator line, it would seem much, much smaller. California is the third biggest state in the US at 423,000 square kilometers, but it also has its size somewhat distorted. If we put it over the UK, it shows us how similar in size they kind of are. Interestingly, the size comparison between US states is pretty accurate on a map because they're all on the roughly same latitude, so their size is distorted on the same scale. Obviously, there are a few differences. North Dakota, for instance, is at a higher latitude than Texas, seeming slightly larger than it is, but it's not a huge difference when compared to other states. 
US states are a great example to demonstrate the shape distortion that maps also cause, because a lot of them has straight lines as borders. The one I just mentioned, North Dakota, starts curving up as you drag it towards Canada, and the inverse happens as you move it to South America. While a country like Ecuador is displayed with its true size because it's so close to the equator line and therefore the map display doesn't distort it. The country's name is a bit of a clue on that one. However, if we drag it over the US, it would easily be one of the top four states in terms of size. So essentially, any country which is displayed along the equator line on a map is displayed closer to its actual size on a globe. And as they move further away from the equator line, their display becomes more distorted both in size and in shape. This website, and by the way, this isn't a sponsored video, is also great for checking what type of countries would fit inside another country. For example, you could fit France, Germany, Portugal, Spain, Italy, the UK, Poland, Ukraine, Turkey, and Austria inside China and still have room to spare. Speaking of the UK, if you drag it over Finland, they look almost the same size, while if you drag it over Congo, it's only slightly larger. But if you look at Congo and Finland, you would never imagine that. Moving to Asia, Indonesia would seem gigantic if it were placed over Russia, stretching from Finland to China. On the top of the US, it would be longer than the distance between the east and the west coast. What's important to understand is that countries displayed as large are still large in reality. What is wrong is the comparison between countries which makes us believe that the size difference is bigger than it truly is. Brazil, which at 8 million square kilometers is inarguably very big, seems way larger when it's on top of the US, and even more when it's put on top of Russia. The difference of sizes on a map isn't equal or doesn't accurately represent the actual difference in size in terms of square kilometers. The USA seems much, much smaller when it's put over the Democratic Republic of Congo, and the difference is even visible if we just move it slightly south over Mexico. The other way around also works. Mexico over the US is much bigger, and further north, above Canada, it seems gigantic. Australia, one of the world's largest countries at 7.6 million square kilometers, isn't displayed much larger or smaller than it actually is because of its proximity to the equator line. But if you drag it over Europe, you're able to see how much larger it actually is than pretty much the entire continent. The main point is that in order for us to truly perceive this size comparison between countries on a map, they would have to be displayed along the same line. The fact that they are displayed in their locations makes it so that their size is distorted when we try to convert a globe into a plane. Let's try China next, which almost comes close to the size of Russia, while on a map it looks much much smaller. Japan would seem enormous if it were placed over Canada, when in reality it's only about 380,000 square kilometers. If you place it over Europe, here in green, you also get a much bigger size than reality, in red. Somewhere like Antarctica, which seems gigantic on a map, isn't really that big, being only slightly larger than Brazil, but if you place it further north, it increases to the size of pretty much all of North America. I think Antarctica is actually the biggest example of this. It seems absolutely huge in its normal display when it's not that gigantic in reality. It's just placed on the South Pole and therefore is spread all over the map when you turn the globe into a plane. Essentially, maps are great, but we should remember that sometimes things displayed on it aren't as big as they really are. And if you're seeing a Mercator projection, the furthest an object is from the equator, the more disproportionately big it is displayed. Now, there are versions of map projections which allow for more accurate representations than the Mercator one. Some correct certain aspects and in benefit of others, but that's a topic for another video. If you want to have a 100% accurate map, you're just gonna have to use a globe. Thanks for watching the video, if you liked it, make sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you want to catch future videos. I will see you next time for more general knowledge.